Welcome back to This Week in High School Sports. We're hanging out in Mount Lake Terrace today at our show sponsor, Red Onion Burgers, and with us, the owner, Sean Richards. Sean, people think of Red Onion Burgers, and they think, obviously, burgers, it's in the name, shakes, fries, other things, but you're so much more than that. We are. We offer barbecue ribs, our world-famous red cob salad Ooh. with turkey and ham. Healthy options. I like it. Healthy options. And we also offer paninis, fresh fruit, and smoothies, and so much more. So come on by. 21005 44th Avenue, Mount Lake Terrace. Welcome to this week in high school sports, and we have a first for you today, thanks to Steve Willett's creative thinking. <laughs> father-son interview we do uh it's the uh, the final team left standing at the end of the uh the winter sports season if you will the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks basketball team at making it all the way to the Yakima Sun Dome this past weekend I should say this past week to play in the state tournament they wished they'd played into the weekend but unfortunately they were knocked out on Wednesday in the first round still making it over there is quite the accomplishment but they did lose to Liberty 64-48 so we thought we'd bring in one of the uh, the star players on the team, Kyrie Armstead. He's kind of elusive, from, not only from his uh, the guys that try to defend him out on the court, but also from us. He works pretty much all uh, all weekend after he's not uh, on the basketball court. But we were finally able to track him down, and we thought we'd bring in his dad, Mark, also. Mark uh, played college basketball at Gonzaga, so we thought we'd talk to both of them in regards to uh, Kyrie's career at Mount Lake Terrace and also the college recruiting process, since Mark's been through it himself. So here's the interview we did with Kyrie and Mark. The high school basketball season wrapped up over the weekend, and when it was all said and done, one of our teams locally, one of our Edmond School District teams, was still standing and able to say they played in a dome this year. It was the Mount Lake Terrace Hawks boys basketball team. And with us right now, star senior Kyrie Armstead and dad Mark Armstead, who uh, played a little basketball in his time uh, himself, wearing off the uh, the sweatshirt there showing the, the Gonzaga pride there so we're going to talk to these guys for a moment Kyrie I'll start with you uh, again you made it to the dome second consecutive year I know you guys didn't get the results you wanted as you got knocked out by Liberty in the first round but when it's all said and done and you look back 12 teams make it to the dome out of 64 teams in the state uh, are you able to kind of put it in perspective a few days later and recognize the fact that uh, maybe you didn't get the success you wanted there but nonetheless it was a successful season it was even a few days later is that that next day when I woke up it was just the season was great. Come on, we one loss in the regular season. West Coast champs. All my got, like my teammates got honorable mentions and all West Coast. Just we had a tremendous season. Took out the number one team in districts. Like we just it was a great season. Just well, positive. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit. I know first of all uh, you you go through the season nineteen and one. You're the only two A school in a three A conference, and you win the uh, the league title on the last day of the year. And then you uh, you have a little hiccup against Cedra Woolley, and all of a sudden now you're uh, you're in loser out games the entire way through the districts. Does that help you to appreciate making it to the dome that much more, knowing that the uh, the road wasn't paved really nice and smooth? You guys had to go through some rough terrain. You know, it's just a big loss doesn't label us. That's what I said before. It's just one loss, and we just keep battling. We that's what we do. We just go the hardest route, and we gotta be proud of how we did it. Just one loss is gonna label us for mm -hmm. sure. Mark, you're his dad, but you've also been his coach for a, a long part of the journey here. Not just his coach, but some of his teammates as well. Mm -hmm. You've been coaching Kyrie and uh, some of the other guys since, what, fourth, fifth grade? Right. So uh, as far as what you've seen over the years and where these guys were maybe eight or nine years ago, what were the expectations for these guys maybe, say, back in 2010, 2011? Did you expect them to get to the Dome in 2018? You know, I, 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 was, I was concerned. I was, I was <laughs> definitely a little concerned. <clears throat> Uh, and, and I knew that we had some really good players, obviously Keegan and Brendan and Max and Kyrie, and then getting a Cole to come in out of eighth grade out of nowhere, um, that was awesome. And then getting a couple of other guys to come in there and help us out with Connor. But no, I, I, w I didn't know if we can get to state. Always a goal that we wanted to have happen. Me and Kyrie talked about it, obviously, with his brother making it to fourth in the state his senior year. We can't have we can't have that. So we definitely want to see if he can get that. So for him to get there and get that, that it was just tremendous. Especially seeing you know, like I said, Keegan and Max and Brendan and Cole, those guys that have been with us and been struggling through feeder. It, it was tremendous for them to get that. And well, and you uh, you gave me a pretty interesting stat off camera here a few moment, minutes ago. What was the highest place this team finished during the feeder seasons when they, they were coming up? They didn't finish any higher than ninth place. And I remember his sixth grade year, they won. 
I think, two games. Lost to Snohomish and Everett. We needed that Everett win to get to the playoffs, and they ended up beating us. I can remember those. Um, so, yeah, they never finished higher than ninth, and for them to come out their senior year, get 22 wins, win Wesco. I mean, there was teams that used to drub us badly, badly back in feeder, and for us to come back this year as a seniors and for him to be one of the guys to lead us to get us to Wesco Championship, that's, that's just a tremendous testament to how hard these guys work, especially Keegan, Brendan, and Max. I mean, these are guys that you didn't think were going to make, you know, all league, and all of a sudden here's Keegan, an all league player. Here's Connor coming off the bench, an all league player coming from a different school that traditionally isn't very good in feeder. Um, Max going out there, giving us incredible minutes, a cold doing incredible minutes. And then Brendan, I mean, Brendan coming out there, second leading scorer on the team. I mean, these are kids that I look back in sixth grade like, eh, all right, it, we, can, we can do some things maybe, but, you know, just the simple fact that they all put in that work over all these years and there was a lot of driving with, with Keegan and, and Max and, and Brendan and him going to trainings and stuff outside of just regular school or practices. So it's tremendous to see them do that. Hard work pays off. It always does. It's very nice. Hey, uh, so the trip itself, you guys play a 7-15 game on Wednesday night. Talk me through the itinerary. I know when we had uh, we had Keegan and Brendan in here last week in studio, they weren't really sure of how it was going to play out, but it sounds like you guys went over on Tuesday night. Is that right? Yeah. When, when you get to a – and you guys went over to Ellensburg before you went to Yakima – Obviously, you want to create memories and experiences, and you want to have fun, but at the same time, it's a business trip, and you're, you're there to play basketball. Mm -hmm. Are you still able in the moment to kind of enjoy the entire process, knowing that, hey, we, we got this far, now let's have a little fun with it, or uh, are you guys just so focused that you're not even able to do that at that moment? I mean, we were, we were really happy just the whole time. About, we made it to state, was, but we were just focusing the whole time what our main goal was, was March 3rd, March 3rd, March 3rd. We didn't get that outcome, but... We were just happy we, we got it there. That's really what it was. So this year, uh, last year you played a 9 a.m. game on Wednesday morning. Uh, this year it was 7.15 at night. Mark, I've got to think, as a dad, you can speak for all the parents on this one, a little bit more enjoyable to have a 7.15 game? Oh, that was incredible. <laughs> we, out, of, out of all the years that we've gone down to either whether it's Tacoma or Yakima, never had anything that late. Normally it's, we've had an 8 a.m. or a 9 a.m. game, so... For me, that was tremendous. I loved it. So what did you guys do with the extra time? Were you able to get a practice in before the game or a shoot-around, or where did you guys go? Yeah, we got a shoot-around in, went over their plays, Liberty's plays, and their inbounds and all that stuff. So it was like a normal game day for us. We got our shoot-around in. We got time to chill after our shoot-around, get food into us. So it's just the same game day stuff. Tom, talk me through the game a little bit. Obviously, it's single elimination. You're trying to get into the quarterfinals. Good first quarter, right? You guys had a 10-point lead at one point. So uh, what, what was going right? And then maybe uh, after that, what, what happened and what, what went off the track, so to speak? It was a tale of two halves. <laughs> the, we had 34 in the first half, and then we only had 11 points in the second half. So we, our defense wasn't, wasn't there in the second half. Actually, in the first half either, because they had 31, and we knew that was too high. We just wanted to, we said in halftime, got to bring up the defense, got to bring up the intensity. And they went into a 2-3 zone, and that kind of just messed up with our flow. And you could tell what happened from there. Mm -hmm. but, what is it like in the Yakima Sun Dome? And I'll ask both of you guys this question. And, and Mark, maybe you can start because your, old, your older son, Marcus, played for that Mount Lake Terrace team. You already mentioned mm -hmm. it. That took fourth in state five years ago. That was when Mount Lake Terrace was a 3A school playing in the Tacoma Dome. Now it's the Sun Dome. Uh, compare and contrast a little bit. Is it just as... Uh, Meaningful and, and, and what, is the magnitude of the moment just as big when you're over there? Oh, it's it's still huge. I mean, it's still you're playing for the number one spot, and so it doesn't matter where you're playing, whether you're a two B school in Spokane or or four A school in Tacoma, you want to get that number one spot. The only difference that I really saw is that it seemed like it was a little bit more community oriented over there in Yakima, and it's just because I think more people tend to stay over overnight and whatnot, and so but. You know, we walked into the hotel, told them where we were from. They're like, okay, you guys have been here before. So it's kind of awesome for that, from that standpoint, the closeness and the community effort of, of Yakima versus Tacoma. But Tacoma's the spot you want to be at. That's, 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 where well, all the, that's where all the killers are. And Kyrie, maybe that's a good question for you too because you weren't obviously on that team. You were only, what, the seventh grade when Marcus was playing in Tacoma, but you were there. So I've got to think that coming up, you were probably aspiring to one day get to the Tacoma Dome. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, your junior year, it gets announced that Malik Terrace is dropping down to a two-way school. 
does it change anything? I mean, would you, obviously Tacoma, you start to see the Metro schools and the Tacoma schools, whereas when you're over at playing in that 2A tournament, it's a little different environment, but uh, does it have any less meaning because it wasn't Tacoma and it was Yakima, or is it just the same? It's all the same. I just watched my brother play. I was like, oh, I'm playing here. I'm playing Tacoma Dome. And I was like, Yakima, what's he, where is I thought it was going to be different, but it's really the same thing. It looks the exact same, same environment, playing basketball, like he said, going for the first place, no different. And uh, Marcus, we mentioned, took fourth in state his senior year. How much do uh, was he a, a factor in pushing you to, to strive for things? I know uh, you guys have a friendly rivalry, to say the least. Uh, obviously, he was always letting you uh, know what he accomplished, but at the same time, I have a feeling like he's one of your biggest cheerleaders. I see him in the stands rooting for you, too. So what's it been like trying to kind of achieve what he's gotten in terms of your teammates versus his teammates, and how supportive uh, has that relationship been? You know, just looking up to somebody that was successful, he had – all league honors. He was an all star, so all state and all that. But just looking up to him, and I was like, all right, now I got to see what I got to do. He's going to push me. We played one on one against each other. He was a great defender, so I'm going to be a great defender. So it's kind of the want to do what he did and a little bit more. So, Dad, what that, what's that like for you? I mean, obviously, you're, uh, you you want the guys to push each other, but mm -hmm. you want it to be uh, supportive at the same time, right? You, right. Want, you want there to be the, uh, you, you want blood to mean something at the end of the day. You know what these guys scratching at each other's eyeballs either but uh, what's it been like for you to to watch these two work with each other and I mean, to go through the process it's been it's been awesome i mean marcus being a typical older brother doesn't want to let his younger brother get over on him whether that be scoring on him whether that be eating more food or anything like that <laughs> he's he's pretty tough on him but the one thing is he, he gave him a lot of advice he, he let him know you know how to handle the pressures of being on varsity you let him know about what Sue's expectations are and, and where that's going to be laid and the, and the, the line's going to be in the sand for that uh, but it's definitely for me to get to watch Marcus be so proud I mean Marcus was in Alaska for the last month or two and so he worked his butt off to get back down here and he got down here the day before to be able to make it to this trip so I'll let you know that it's pretty special to Marcus uh, to watch his brother, his bigger, old, younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> you got a few inches on him, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so now that the uh, the senior year has passed and you're you're done playing basketball, it's time to start thinking about college a little bit. What is the college recruiting like for for basketball? Because it's it's so different from other sports, right? In that division, high division one schools only have two or three scholarships per year to offer, and consequently, I think everybody else has to kind of wait for the trickle down before they can start offering and making commitments and and whatnot. What's it been like for you in terms of uh, college coaches talking to you? Do you enjoy the process or are you having fun with it or is it more of a, a pain in the neck for you? I don't really find it a pain in the neck just because I'm playing basketball and I'm, they're coming to me f for doing what I do. So, you know, I just, it's, it's bitter. I don't know how to really explain it. It's just they're coming to me and I'm just playing my game, no pressure on it at all. Just Want, just finding the right school for me, just looking out what schools to talk to me, what one looks best and all that. So it's a, I kind of like it, to be honest, just because I have all these schools coming at me and giving me attention. And, Mark, what's it been like for you? Because you've uh, you've been on the other side of the fence. You've been that high school teenager being recruited in the past. Again, we mentioned you played for Gonzaga back in the day, and now you're trying to help your son out through this process. So what's it been like for you, and how is it different? Uh the biggest difference, and I think we talked a little bit about this earlier, is you know, just the way they can communicate with you and can't communicate with you, whether it be through IM or text messaging or Snapchat or anything like that, just the way they're able to communicate with you. But back when I went to school way back last century, um, they, you know, when schools talk to you, they pretty much let you know they had a space for you. It was pretty much good to go. Nowadays, it's, it's pretty much schools have, have been talking to people for years and years and years. They, ninth graders 10th graders so uh, their their slots are so so small to get people in there so that's that's the only frustrating thing for me is because I know Kyrie has d1 talent d2 talent just not being able to have someone you know give them an offer so far yet is a little frustrating but at the same time I know it, it is everybody says it Joel Embiid trust the process I mean that, that's really what it is as long as he goes out there and continues to put it in the work especially in school uh, and on the court, it's going to be, it's going to work out good for him. I, don't, I always tell him, don't let anybody ride your wave, and that's really what it's about. If he feels that he's destined to go D1, he might take a little different route to get there, but no different route than myself or one of his old trainers, Brian Parker, took to get to the D1 route. So 
It can definitely be done. Well, this might be a tougher question. And I'll ask both of you, but in terms of you mentioned some of the the technology that's out there nowadays with websites and recruiting services and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Kyrie, is it hard not to get caught up in some of that? Do you find yourself every once in a while pulling up a site and just kind of seeing where where you're at in the uh, the pecking order, so to speak, or do you do you try to avoid that? I avoid all that. Just playing my game, just doing what I do, and they come to me and. Then then that's when I see what's going on, who they're talking to and all that. But I'm not going around looking at schools, like, are they going to talk to me? Is this going to happen? Just just doing what I do and trusting the process. <laughs> Mark, are you doing that a little bit, though? I mean, I've got to think that you've, uh, once or twice, you've pulled up one of those sites. And you oh, can't... no, I love it. I go to those sites <laughs> all the time. I'm seeing where he's ranked with his with his peers, with his homies, uh, with kids that we know he's played against. Um, it's I use it as a motivational factor, especially for him. Um, just to let them know, hey, look, these kids are getting recruited over here. They've been offered hits over here, you know. And it's just something for him to, to keep in the back of his mind and to know that, you know, those kids are, are working just as hard as he is. They're doing just as much as he is. We, we talk a lot about hard work pays off, but it's not just us. I mean, a lot of people believe in that. So when I keep telling them about different kids getting offers or doing different things, I think it's a little bit of a motivational factor. But it is a little bit crazier nowadays just with how – how much technology is out there and you can see where everybody's going, what people are doing, who's looking at who. I mean, that's that's kind of, I like if it. If you spend enough time with it, there aren't too many surprises these days in that regard. <laughs> no, there really isn't, especially the way AAU is now, especially. I mean, people people know who you are. They know where you're, what you're about. So, um, And it's quite easy to see now with, with YouTube and all these different organizations out there now uh, that come to your games and, and tape you and put it out there. I mean, that's it's so awesome just to see that for these kids. I'm jealous. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Born a little bit too soon. Oh, yeah. And Kyrie, for you, you do play AAU. You play for North City um, <clears throat> and kind of a really an all-star team for that matter. I mean, kind of the who's who of West Coast basketball, really, some of your teammates. <clears throat> do you find that more college coaches are showing up at your AAU games than your high school games? Has that changed over the years or – uh, for the most part, are you still seeing uh, up you, on any given Friday night or Tuesday night in January? Are you still looking up in the crowd and seeing rec uh, colleges there as well? The only time I ever see colleges at a high school game is like if the colleges is talk are talking to me and they come, they let me know they're coming to the game. But AAU is crazy. Like I'd, like when we went down to California and Vegas for those top exposure tournaments, there was college like there's all the D1 coaches you can name in there watching top dogs and they're watching us they're just it's crazy in AAU how many coaches are there just under one gym watching so many different players mm. one stop shopping for them mark you didn't have that back in your day right no i Growing mean up in northern california you had you had to you had to be on one of the premier teams i mean there was only maybe in california maybe like five or six really big teams there was only like two or three in northern california when i went there and if you weren't like a gary payton or Eric Bamberger or names like that who played major division one ball you weren't going to get seen so it is kind of cool for him to get to some of the exposure thank you Kobe Kyle for helping him out getting him some some looks from different schools but it does help out tremendously when you have good talent on your team like North City did they had a tremendous amount of talent so coaches flock to them and that helped him out tremendously. Colby Kyle, the, the big man from Monroe, who's going to Princeton next year, one of your teammates for North City. So basically what you're implying is that by having a guy like Colby there, other colleges come to look at Colby, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden in the process, Kyrie makes a nice play, and all of a sudden the eyes kind of shift over in his direction and can kind of work to his advantage. It definitely helps when you're when you're passing to a guy like Colby Kyle or you're sh kicking the ball out to a rhyming – Ryder Kavanaugh Ryder from Mike Kavanaugh. Stevens. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, we had so many players on that team, and so – North City did a great job by giving him the opportunity to play point guard, and so he's out there dishing off to all these guys. And next thing you know, these coaches are like, hey, a 6'4 point guard, we might be able to use that. So definitely, definitely props to Kobe and a lot of those other guys that helped him get exposure. So where are we in the process right now? Do you have any schools in mind, or is anybody coming forward and offering you yet, or is it still a matter of just waiting for that trickle down and being slotted at some point in the next month or two? Is it kind of a waiting game right now? It's, it's a waiting game. You know, I got a bunch of schools talking to me. Like, like we're talking about Colby. He got an offer from Cal Poly, but he didn't. he's going to Princeton now, so Cal Poly came down to me, and now they're talking to me. Um, I'm just waiting it out wherever I go. We don't know yet, but, yeah, this is waiting the game. And so for the next few months, what, uh, what does the, uh, the rest of your senior year look like? Six classes, grinding in this classroom. After 
school, go to Paramount, lift, get some get some muscle on these guns. <laughs> <laughs> we should point out, point out, too, we've been trying to get you on the show all season, but you're a busy guy. You, you work a lot on Sundays when we're recording. Uh, between working and keeping your grades up and basketball, there's a lot on your plate right now. And, Mark, I've got to think, number one, for from a, a parent standpoint, you've got to be pretty proud of this guy and uh, what he's been able to accomplish. I mean, it was, it was way more than what I did, but he, for him to have a job, and that's, you know, he's talked to a lot of the older folks. They're like, they, they give him much respect for that. You know, he has a game Saturday night or something like that, and he's going to work on a Sunday and, or work throughout the week, so I'm definitely proud of him and all the work he puts in because I know it's I know it's tough. I know he's, he's being pulled in so many different ways, but he's handled it pretty well for the most part. I'm not too mad. When you uh, when you see how hard an athlete has to work just to keep the grades up and when they're trying to hold the job down too, does it become a little more? Uh, do you become a little bit more understanding of maybe some of the? Uh, the struggles that other people are going through. We hear in this day and age so often of, of players taking money from agents and from coaches, and obviously it's been really uh, up front and central in the news lately. Do you kind of get where they're, uh, they're coming from when you when you hear those stories? Is it something you can kind of relate to? And how do you kind of make sure that you keep yourself grounded to where those don't become temptations? Right there. <laughs> Just keep it right up there in your head, huh? Just, I mean, when you're working at Albertsons, you don't need to take money from college. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Really, I just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't, because at these AAU tournaments, they, you watch videos about t you can't take money from agents, you can't take money from all this pe all these kind of different people, so it's really up here. You got to just be smart about it and understand what you're putting in jeopardy when you're taking money from people like that. So, yeah, that's my point of view on it. I, I try to see it from, from both angles. I mean... You know better. I mean, like you said, they give you videos before you play in any of these tournaments, what you can and what you can't do, so you know what's going on. Uh, being in, in it previously, um, not to the level that he's at, but definitely I was recruited, and so I never had anybody offer me any sort of money or anything like that, but, you know, we talk about that. We make sure that he doesn't jeopardize anything, just like you talk to your kids about any sort of things that might jeopardize their, their future. You just make sure that he, he's under saying of that, but at the same time, all these kids are so good. You only know they're going to college for one year. I don't know if I want to get too morally upset if someone gets paid 500 bucks, like uh, DeWante Murray or whatever his name is. Uh, 500 bucks, you divide that by 12. That's not even enough for a, a cell phone nowadays. But, you know, some of these kids are able to, to get that. You know, I think they need to figure something out without trying to be too one way or the other. But they, they do need to figure something out because, like I always told him when I was in college, you know, after practice, six, seven o'clock, our food places were closed. I was starving until the next day in the morning. So, I, you know, maybe like a something, a card or something where they can just get food, I think would be tremendous for these guys, especially going into college. But, you know, where does it stop once you do one thing? Yeah, another conversation <laughs> entirely for another day, I'm sure. But, hey, nonetheless, uh, again, you've uh, managed to get it done in the classroom. You're uh, getting it done on the basketball court, working all in the, uh, the meantime, and... Uh, Great kid to boot. So, uh, hey, if you're out there, colleges, come get this guy. He's ready to go and can play a little bit, too. So, Mark, uh, Kyrie, thank you both very much for your time. Kyrie, congratulations on an outstanding career at Mount Lake Terrace, uh, not only this year but uh, in previous years as well. I, I know we were going to get to it and we forgot to hear, but uh, favorite moment during your uh, your senior year? Favorite moment is winning that West Coast champ, getting that big win against Marysville. That was just – I didn't expect to get a West Coast champ, and we did that. Just for my terrorist guys, I'm proud of us. And your favorite career moment, you mentioned that was a different moment. And what do we want to mention here, too? Sophomore year, that game winner, the ball fumbled out of my hands against <laughs> Midway, and I grabbed it in the same, fell out of my hands, grabbed it, and laid it up in the same sequence. And then buzzer beater. It was crazy. It just, I went cold. It was, a great <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, you've had a few great moments. So a lot of accomplishments and a lot to be proud of. So Kyrie, best of luck to you in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mark, thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate, Appreciate it. you guys. And uh, we'll see where uh, Kyrie Armstead takes his services next year. Whoever gets him, they're going to be very fortunate. They're going to get a great student athlete. Nicely done. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Awesome. I'm glad we were able to get Kyrie in the studio. It's been a while. We've been trying to do that for some time. <laughs> He's a busy guy. Yeah. I mean, when you're playing basketball, working, and you've got school, I can see where you're not always able to make the time to come in and do things like this. But uh, nonetheless, we are happy to finally get him in here. And, and think, his dad. And his dad, yeah. And I have a feeling the, uh, the future is bright for Kyrie. And whoever gets him, whichever school finally uh, makes that call and 
gets him into their school, I think they're uh, they're going to get themselves one heck of a, a ball player and a, a good person to boot. So uh, mm -hmm. looking forward to seeing what he does. Yeah, and now I'm excited because we get to talk about baseball. <laughs> Doesn't Yay. feel like it yet with the no, weather outside, but, but uh, you know, it's just it. I don't know the. Tulips are starting, the daffodils are starting to come up. It's starting to feel like spring. It's very slowly, but it's getting there. We've, yeah. we've had some sun this weekend, so yeah. hopefully that means something. But you're right, it is baseball season. At least uh, it's preparation for baseball season. The players are warming up and practice has started. So we thought we'd get a few of our, our local players in here to talk baseball. More specifically, the Meadowdale Mavericks baseball team. A team that's missed the, uh, the district playoffs each of the last two years. That's the bad news. Good news is, is that they have quite a few seniors this coming season, and we brought three of them into the studio tonight to talk about their upcoming year. So we brought Will, Tommy, and Travis in to talk Mavericks baseball. It's time to start talking high school baseball, and we're going to start with the Meadowdale Mavericks, a team that is poised to have a breakout year. After missing the district playoffs the last couple of years, they're senior heavy and they are loaded with talent. And with us, three of those seniors right now, Will Schaefer, who is a shortstop and a pitcher, Tommy Dimmick, who is a pitcher and third baseman, and Travis Hagen, who is a catcher, an all-area catcher. And uh, gentlemen, first of all, thanks for being with us. Your senior year, this is a baseball team that hasn't made it to the playoffs since you guys were freshmen. You've been oh so close a couple times. And Will, I'll start with you. Uh, what would it mean for this team to, to get to districts this year? Oh, it'd mean, it mean a lot. I mean, that's, that's, that's our base goal this year. It's our, kind of our baseline. We expect to get the district tournament, and then we'll go from there. But it'd mean a lot for this team. Tommy is a pitcher and uh, as the ace of the staff, uh, I've got to think that you've had aspirations of pitching in district playoffs oh, before. Oh, definitely, definitely. You, have you already let yourself kind of start thinking about it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I haven't really been able to pitch in a big moment for you know the Mavs ever, so I'm really looking forward to having that opportunity this year. And Travis, you have got to think uh, you've you got the hat on, you're ready to go. What would it mean for you guys <laughs> to get to the postseason? It mean a lot. Uh, we haven't been there since our freshman year, obviously, and uh, to be able to do it with these two guys right here and the rest of the seniors, it mean a lot to me this year. And I guess I want to start off by talking about the, the two of you really quick here because I remember one big moment last year, and I had to kind of refresh my memory, uh, the Mount Lake Terrace game. I think you guys remember that one fairly well, right? Oh, yeah. Tommy throwing seven shutout innings, and Travis, you got to hit a walk-off home run in a That's one nothing right. game. What is that experience like? It was crazy. Uh, I remember... Uh, walking out to the on-deck circle and uh, Coach Hummel saying, this wouldn't be a bad time for a home run. Right <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got in the box. I had two strikes on me. I wasn't really expecting a home run. I was just trying to get on base, get a double, single, whatever it would take so I uh, can get moved over. And I uh, got a pitch and it flew. Hit it over the fence. Yeah. And, and Tommy, when you're a pitcher like that in a game where it's 0-0 in the seventh inning, yeah. I, I've got to think that's, in one respect, you're feeling pretty good about the way things are going for yourself. Yeah. But at the other, uh, on the other side, Maybe get a little frustrated that you're not getting run support. Yeah. So what's that moment like when he hits the ball over the fence? Well, when you when you get a run going, it just changes the entire complexity of the game and the momentum shifts, and you feel a lot better going out to pitch the next inning if if you're the away team. Um, if you have a run behind you, you're more comfortable and you're you're more relaxed to, you know, some leeway to throw balls or whatever. So yeah, it's a much better feeling to have a run behind. So yeah. So there were some good moments last year. Now we're hoping to build on that this year. And Will and Tommy, I've got to start with asking you guys, you both played basketball this year for the Mavs. Is it hard when that season comes to an end and all of a sudden you have to make that quick transition from one sport to another, especially two sports like baseball and basketball that are so different? Will, what is it like when you have to finally put the, uh, put the shoes away and all of a sudden step out onto the, uh, the diamond? Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard, uh, especially this year with basketball. We, made, we, we actually made the district tournament, so we went uh, oh, about a week longer. So we had only about a week and a half to get prepared for baseball. But, I mean... It's 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 fun. You just go out every day and start playing catch, whatnot, hitting hitting in the cages, and then get ready you, to you go. Feel ready, yeah. And Tommy, I'm, the sports are so different. Uh, do you uh, in in this day and age with so many different baseball players playing year round, guys yeah. like Travis who are, are working out at facilities when you guys were playing basketball, do you feel in some ways like sometimes you're behind uh, the curve a little bit because of that, or in some ways maybe is it better for the muscle groups because you're doing something different? Yeah, I think there's definitely. Uh, a question to be asked that you're, you're behind when it starts because you're, you're focusing on a different sport but you know through all the conditioning and the, and the working out you have to do for basketball like your athleticism is is on par with everyone else's and you can get going easier with that but definitely some some extra work with throwing on the weekends and hitting is it needs to happen to get ready for the season for sure so Travis uh, I understand you uh, you have a job when you're not playing baseball right yeah where are you working 
I work at Base by Pros uh, right off of 99 in Linwood. So you're working at a baseball facility. Yeah. <laughs> so you're uh, you're pretty busy with baseball all year round. Do you uh, do you find yourself ever getting burned out? I know you guys love the sport, but I mean when you're working and playing baseball all the time, what is it like? Because these guys get a little bit of a diversion in their lives, and for you, you're you're constant baseball. Yeah, uh, being able to work at a baseball facility, it's pretty hard because I sit there and watch baseball all day, and it's just like motivating me to get out there and get even better. Uh, so I kind of have to hold myself back some days because I want to stay in there until 10 o'clock at night hitting or, or anything like that. Uh, so it's definitely hard to not burn myself out during the offseason. So looking at the schedule, your first game isn't until March 16th, so you've got a little bit of time right now. And once you get rolling into the baseball season, you're weather permitting, you're pretty much playing every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. This time of year, number one, you don't have games, and number two, weather becomes an element. Uh, not always an easy one at that. What is it like trying to get ready for a baseball season? What are you guys doing? Will, maybe I'll ask you first, on a rainy day, for instance, in February or early March now, how exactly are you guys going about getting prepared for a season? Yeah, well, every day we pretty much plan on uh, just going over to our new Metadel play fields to practice for most of the time. So we basically just carpool over there. It's like a two-minute drive, and then we do all basically all of our practice there besides hitting. So so with the new fields, you can pretty much play even in the rain for that. Oh, part, yeah, it's right? been great so far, so... And Tommy, as a catcher, I mean, what exactly are you doing this time of year? Obviously, you don't want to get your arm too thrown out yet. And are you slowly starting to work up to uh, to a pitch count, or where are you at in the process? Uh, yeah, it's a little difficult with the rain to get bullpens in and, and get some throwing work in. So it's just it's primarily long toss right now and, and some flat grounds. But um, the bullpens are going to have to wait for a little while until our field dries up a little bit. And Travis, with the weather being what it is, are you uh, are you doing more conditioning indoors? Is it more weightlifting? What what exactly does the team do this time of year? Uh, we usually just go over the play fields, like Will said, and uh, rain or shine, we're out there getting after it, uh, taking ground balls, blocking, throwing, whatever it is we're doing that day. So, so uh, before we talk about your yourselves and your your teammates, tell me a little bit about the coaching staff. Uh, Travis, I'll start with you. Bill Hummel, he's been at the helm there for quite a while at Meadowdale. What is it like playing for Coach Hummel? What has he meant to you and your growth and to this team? It's meant a lot to me. Uh, as a coach, I like Hummel because he, uh, he pushes me every single day. If I'm slacking one bit, he'll be on me about it, uh, which is very good for me, being able to play next year at uh, Seattle U. I'm going to need that push and motivation to get better every day. Uh, he means a lot because uh, he uh, has been around the game quite a while, so he knows all the ins and outs. And I think teaching that to the younger freshmen and sophomores is huge because some of them are not as uh, educated as uh, seniors, of course. Um, so being able to move the game down the line is very huge. And Tommy, as a pitcher, I understand you work with Dave Kuiper a lot? Yeah, I do. Tell me about Dave. Um, well, he, he's he's not affiliated with Middle High School, um, so he, he takes extra time and vacation days and gets up early to, to go to work and then provide that time you know, back to Middle High School and the baseball team. So we definitely appreciate him and all the all the pitchers on the staff. And he, he knows a lot. He, he still plays in a men's league. And he, he knows a lot, and he loves working with us, so we're very appreciative of him for that. Nice. And, Will, how about Ellen Bavis? Yeah, Ellen I, Bavis. I, I spend a lot of time with uh, Coach Pavez just because he's the infield coach. So I've been with him since freshman year, but he's great as well. He, uh, he pushes us a lot. He gets, he gets on us if we're not doing what, what he expects. And, I mean, he's taught me a lot about playing infield since he, that's what he played when he was you know, <laughs> as a, as a young, young man. And I don't want to forget about the JV guys either. So Travis, how about, uh, how about coach Warner? Uh, coach Warner, I would say he's pretty, pretty funny. He's the funny coach out of all of yeah. them. I would say, uh, when, when the practice might be kind of like, uh, serious and kids are kind of getting on themselves, beating themselves up over a ground ball or something, he kind of uh, lightens the mood a little bit. And I feel like that's huge because sometimes you can get a little tense and then your game might not be on, on par. So be, having him there to be able to lighten the mood is, is very good. And finally, uh, I'll let Tommy and, and Will both answer this <laughs> next one. Roger O'Neill, the basketball coach. Yeah, he's uh, he's coaching right. baseball now too, right? Yeah. What's, uh, what's, what's Coach O'Neill like out on, the, uh, out on the field as opposed to how would you compare and contrast Coach O'Neill, the baseball coach, versus Coach O'Neill, the basketball coach, Will? Uh, well, I wouldn't say there's some respect loss, but uh, he's definitely a different person on the baseball field. <laughs> he's, he's a lot light, more lighthearted and uh, a lot more, more. He's more of a a peer than a than a coach. But I mean, I still have a lot of respect for him. He's he played during high school as well, and he knows a lot about the game. So it's fun having him out there. Tommy, do you concur on that one? Or I do. Um, he's definitely wearing a lot more layers. <laughs> some days you can only see his eyes. He's wearing a beanie <laughs> around his face and gloves and and pants opposed to basketball season where he's just wearing shorts and short, short socks and everything. So 
Yeah, he's definitely definitely a different person, but the same coach. You take the gym rat and put him outside, and things change a little. Yeah, he, go, he goes definitely. for comfort. On that, <laughs> feel. Hey, you can do that when you get a little older, right? <laughs> I'm gonna have you guys talk about each other here momentarily before we get to the rest of your teammates. And, and Travis, I'll start with you since you are the catcher. Tell me about Tommy Dimmick, the uh, the ace of the pitching staff. What's he like to catch, and uh, what is he like as a teammate? Uh, as a teammate, he's a really good leader. I would say he he uh, shows a good leadership to the younger kids, kind of guides them through what they're doing, and if they don't really understand, he'll be there to uh, explain it to them. Um, I'm expecting a lot from Tommy this year as our ace. I think he uh, did a very good job last year as our ace as well. Um, so I think he's going to have really good this year. Good I, this don't, year. I don't want you giving away too much out there for the, uh, the <laughs> opponents that might be watching, but give me a quick scouting report. Give me maybe one one pitch that he throws that's, uh, that's uh, effective and seems to do well. Okay. Uh, I'd say his best pitch is probably his curveball. So if you're a hitter, I probably wouldn't want to – Put that in your plan. It's probably not going to hit it. It's, really, it's a really good pitch. Is it easy to catch? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes it starts low and it bounces in the dirt, but sometimes it's up high and it's still down low, so it's kind of all over the place, but it has a lot of movement. Does Travis do a pretty nice job of blocking it when he does, yeah. does get in the dirt? Yeah, he, he, he's good at that for sure. Nice. And now, Tommy, tell me a little bit about Will and what it's like to play with him. Um, well, Will obviously um, is has accomplished a lot academically at Meadow High School and is very smart and knows what he's doing in, in all assets of the game. So that's really good to have, you know, as your shortstop captain of the defense. Um, just know everything, what's going on, how many outs, what's the inning, you know, who's on base, what to do in every situation. It's really, really important, and we're so lucky to have him at short. Um, but just basics of the game, he's a really good hitter. He's a really good fielder. He does everything well, and he's, he's a very good motivator to the younger kids and to all the seniors. He's, he pushes us all, and it's, it's, we're really lucky to have such a shortstop like him. And, Will, what about Travis over there? Tell me about the catcher. Oh, yeah, Travis is just – Natural born talent. I mean, he wor he works super hard in the off season, and it shows. Uh, he's been a power hitter for us the last three three almost four years. He played as a freshman as well. But uh, I mean, as a, as a catcher, he's just a great leader out there. He has super loud voice at practice and in the games. So, I mean, everyone knows that he's commanding that defense, and uh, he, I mean, all the younger kids trust him as well. Just being being a good leader, he is so. It's great having them back behind the plate. And it's not just these three that are out there. You've got a whole team of, uh, of Mavericks ready to go. I think when I looked at the roster that's online, I counted up to nine seniors right now. And so I know that you guys are, are pretty heavy in that regard. But uh, tell me about this team overall. Travis, I'll start with you. And I'll have you maybe talk about the pitcher since you are the catcher. Uh, when Tommy is not on the mound, who else are we going to watch? Uh, maybe start with this guy here. What's, what's he like to, to catch? Yeah, uh, I actually really haven't caught Will too much. Uh, I didn't really play with him on JV my freshman year very much. I caught him, I think, maybe once. Uh, I've caught some bullpens for him, but I, I expect Will to throw a lot of strikes this year and get a lot of people out just because of that. And who would the other pitchers be that we might be looking at this year? Uh, we have Anthony Toyne, Aaron Chester, Nate Manilis, and a couple others. Uh, I think those are our big three for us this year, being seniors. And we're, we're assuming that uh, that Tommy's probably taking the ball a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, so we'll... We don't want to give that away yet either. I'm guessing that Tommy might be pitching on Tuesday from time to time. <laughs> uh, as far as some of those other guys, do we have a couple of guys that might be worthy of? You, maybe we won't give away names yet. Obviously, it's still early, but are you mm -hmm. starting to see some uh, some players out there that might be able to pick up the ball on Wednesday and Friday and give yeah. you guys a good chance to win? We uh, we lost one of our starters from last year, but we also have another guy who will take his spot. So I think our starters is pretty set right now, and we'll have a good good key of guys to start. So. Nice. And Tommy, for you, uh, tell me about some of the other guys in the infield. I know Will's your your shortstop when you're pitching. Who else is in the infield when you're uh, when you're out there on the mound? And who are we relying on to uh, maybe field the field those ground balls? Yeah, um, we're a little bit unsure about third base if I'm pitching. You know, we got some kinks to work out. Um, but second base, we have Cutter Boucher. He's a returning um, varsity player from last year. We expect him to have a pretty good year this year. But he's only a sophomore, so there's some experience that's lacking. But still, we we expect some some good things out of him this year. And then at first base, we got possibly Anthony Toyne, maybe Aaron Chester. Um, Anthony Toyne has, has been around the program for a very long time, and he, he, he'll do some good things for us this year as well. well. We don't want to put too much pressure on Cutter, but uh, older sister already has a ring, right? So <laughs> yes. She's already got a championship, no. so maybe uh, maybe Cutter will bring some of that pedigree yeah. there. And uh, how about some of the outfielder, outfielders, Will? Who are we looking at maybe fighting for some of those Yeah, points? the outfield's more of a toss-up at this point. We're still... Guys are still competing every day at practice to see who's actually going to get the spots out there. But we got some good young players uh, showing what they got, uh, looking good. So we'll see. But we also have some returner seniors that are, I mean, we know what they can do. So we'll see. So we mentioned it before. This was a team that went 8-11 and last year, 10-10 and the year before. 
besides the obvious, which is getting good pitching and scoring more runs, in kind of a one or two sentence answer, what does this team need to do to get to that next level? Is it just a matter of experience? Is it a matter of one aspect of the game? Is it are, are we are we feeling like we're close right now, Tommy? Um, I think we're we're as close as we've ever been since my freshman year when we had the 12, st 12 starting uh, like seniors on both ends, um, offense and defensively. Um, I think that we need to score more runs this year. We haven't we've been lacking that the last two years, and I think that's largely in part due to the weather that we've had and on-field BP and the cage work, it's all been lacking. So with better weather this year and more work and more dedication, we can score runs and, and win some more games. We should mention, too, we already uh, brought up the fact that their home or their opener is March 16th. That'll be a non-conference game against Lake Stevens. You guys do have a jamboree scheduled for this Friday. You're going to be playing three in innings against Mount Lake Terrace and three innings against Linwood. Are you guys excited to get out there? Is it kind of that time of the season where you're uh, you're done warming up and throwing bullpen? You want to just get out there and play somebody else, Will? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's only been one week so far, so we still have a lot of things to work on and, and get, in, get into our game plan. But it'll be fun to play against another team since we just go out and play against each other all the time. So, And, and I'm looking at the schedule here, too, and we should note that uh, Wesco is divided up for baseball into north and south. In the past, when you guys were freshmen and sophomores, you would play the same team all three times that week. So you would play a three-game series against Mount Lake Terrace, a three-game series against Edmonds Woodway and Linwood. Now they've changed it to where you're only playing the teams in your division twice. So you're playing them on a Monday, or I'm sorry, a Tuesday and a Wednesday, and then you play one of the teams up in the North Division on that Friday. So good and bad, I guess. You get to see more teams that way, but you're not playing your uh, your crosstown rivals as much. Do you guys like it? Do you not like it as much? Are you indifferent? Uh, where do we stand on the, uh, do you like the old format better? I'm kind of guessing that might be the case. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing yeah, three heads nod right now. Yeah. So, Travis, what do, you, uh, what do you like best? And tell me, tell me why. Uh, I like the old format a lot better than the current one because uh, that Friday game means a lot more than it does right now. Uh, being able to go compete for a rubber match game potentially or sweep them in the series is a lot more, uh, uh, a lot better for the team and it, it makes us a lot more motivated, I would say, than it, like going up and playing Arlington on a Friday or something like that, or just one game. So the rubber match is when the team split on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then the, the Friday game would decide who wins yeah. the series, so to speak. Tommy, do you miss not having that opportunity to win a series when it's tied up like that? Yeah, I definitely do. It, it was big for Emma's Woodway week um, when we if, if the series was split on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then you go Friday and you'd be talking to your friends, you know, on, on that Thursday night and, and bragging and whatnot. See who's going to win the Friday game. So th that that changes a lot of things. But um, we got to win the Tuesday and Wednesday games now. So now instead of going to uh, Edmonds Woodway maybe on Friday, and I'm looking at the week that you play Edmonds Woodway, you go to Arlington. So yeah. a little bit different for you, Will. Yeah, I mean, I I like playing. I mean, getting a variety of teams to play. It's it's that's another aspect that I like. But I I definitely enjoy the old aspect as well, or the old format as well. Three game series is more like pro baseball and college baseball. So, is it too early to start looking at the the division and trying to project who are the the tough teams or where teams might finish this year? Or do you guys have any kind of an idea right now as to who might be the the teams to beat, so to speak, Tommy? Um, I think the league last year was was senior heavy, mm -hmm. so a, a lot of really good players have left, like Kyler McMahon at OSU and Ryan Ober in the North Division for Glacier Peak. Um, but uh, I think I expect them to to have a good year. Um, Shorewood, they've constantly been good um, for the past couple of years, so th those two teams will probably be at the top, possibly with Meadowdale as well. So Does that sound about right, Will? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think Malik Terrace could have a good year as well. They have, I think they have a good senior class, too. Travis, do we have a, a particular team we enjoy playing more than others based on rivalries or friendships? or? Uh, I kind of like playing all the teams, but I would say Edmunds Woodway the most, just because we, I probably know more guys on Woodway than all the other teams. Um, so probably that's, Woodway. That's a general consensus usually <laughs> when you ask Meadowdale athletes anyway, yeah. right, for the yeah. most part. And as far as uh, your senior years, uh, do we know where anybody's going yet? Obviously, Travis, your sweatshirt's kind of a, a giveaway over there. I assume you're uh, going to be a Seattle U baseball player next year? Yeah, yeah. Uh, why Seattle, Seattle U? Uh, I wanted to stay close to home was a big thing. Uh, I like that it's a private school and the school's pretty small class-wise, and that's more of my type of style. Uh, the, the coaching staff at Seattle U is amazing. Uh, Elliot Cribby was a USA pitching coach, I think two years ago, and uh, Donnie Harrell knows the game very, very well, and he also was a catcher, so that means a lot to me. Um, so the coaching staff means a lot. Seem to be putting a nice fence around the Seattle area too, and keeping a lot of the uh, the local products home, which is always nice too. Yeah. Uh, Tommy, what about you? Do you have any ideas as to where you might be next year? Um, I'm I'm unsure at the moment. It could be Cal Poly, could be University of Washington, you know, one of the two, possibly University of Michigan. 
Um, I'm, I'm still unsure. And is baseball perhaps in your future? Or? Um, maybe, but most likely not. Okay. Yeah. And Will, uh, I understand you were just accepted to a school recently. Yes, I just admitted to Cal Poly, so could be seeing Tom there as well. Yeah. Very nice. And for you, sports? or. Um, not, the, not at the Division One level, but probably intramurals, <laughs> just for fun. A hey, little less time on the sports and more time in the academics. But I'll definitely like continue playing baseball, whether any level, and just love the game. That's the nice thing about baseball. These uh, these men's leagues are popping up everywhere, That's and right. you can always yeah. keep playing. So until then, though, before they can join a men's league, they need to uh, get things done for the Mavericks and in Wesco. Should be a fun year, guys. Thank you very much for joining us, and best of luck to the Mavericks all season long. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, it's the time of year when we start talking about things like rainouts and weather permitting <laughs> and all those other factors, right? You have to around here. It's yeah. the Pacific Northwest and with so many outdoor sports that uh, can't play through those conditions. Yeah, it definitely becomes a factor. So we're hoping we're hoping that there's going to be a jamboree on Friday. And mm -hmm. it sounds from uh, from talking to the Meadowdale players as though they do have a, a slot open on Saturday if that in jamboree, in fact, needs to get moved. So they are ready for that. But uh, nonetheless, this is the time of year where you uh, you start looking at the, the weather forecast as much as you look at the matchups on paper. That's right. And if you want to see what's going on, westcoathletics.com does do a really good job mm -hmm. of tracking the reschedules and the rainouts and all of that if you want to check to see if your team or your whatever team you're following is Scheduling playing. for all the sports, too, in terms yeah. of their complete schedules for the That's entire right. season. And the rosters and all that. And there's so. a lot going on. It's spring sports are always yeah. busy, so we've, uh, we've got plenty to cover, and we'll be talking about all of it over the next couple months. Yes, we will. So we will see you all next week, and thank you for joining us.